Hello, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and I thought I'd take just a few moments to show you some of the print workflow improvements in InDesign CS6. Let's take a look. I have a document open here, and this document is set up for letter size, but one of my international counterparts is going to want the same document for print on an A4. So if I use my alternate layout feature, what I can do, let's see, go to our Pages panel, you can see that I have a layout here already for letter size. And just using the little pull down menu on this one layout, I can say create an alternate layout within the same InDesign document. And that alternate layout can be based on anything I want, any page size or orientation. So let's make it tall and let's make it A4. And just by doing that, which by the way, I can leave the vertical tag in there or take it out, it's going to base the source from the letter document using our liquid layout feature we've talked about in the past and make it an A4 automatically in the same document. So now I have a letter size and A4 size in the one document. I can double click to see the A4, double click to see the letter. And as you can see, InDesign made the adjustments accordingly. I can even take it up a notch. Let's go ahead and make one more alternate layout. And this time we'll make the alternate layout a horizontal view of the A4, just to give our client another perspective. So we click OK, and now we have the horizontal A4, the vertical A4, and the letter size A4. Never has it been easier in a print workflow to have alternate sizes and alternate layouts for your InDesign documents. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is working with linked content. So I've got an InDesign document open here. And what I'd like to do is experiment by, first of all, let's go ahead and add a new page. And now that we have the new spread, let's go ahead, go back to our first page. We can close the Pages panel. And what I'd love to do is have this content from this first page on one of the other spreads. But rather than do a copy and paste, I'm going to do a new command under the Edit menu called Place and Link. InDesign has always been able to place content from your hard drive and link to it. But now we can link to content in the existing InDesign document or from document to document. So when I choose Place and Link, it loads up our new conveyor with that content that I just selected. It gives me the placement gun, just as if I were bringing in this content from the hard drive. I can go anywhere I want, same InDesign document, different InDesign document, and more importantly, I can either choose to place it as is, or hold down a modifier key, for example, the Shift key in this case, and resize the frame so that I get a different perspective of the new content. Now you'll notice when we zoom in on this content on the page, you'll notice that we get a little link symbol letting us know that this content is currently linked to the content originally set up. If we go in and make any changes, so we change the word detail to non-detail, when we do that, and scroll down, we'll notice that our content is now out of date. So we can just click, and it will update the content, giving us the latest version. So that is link content. And link content is not just text and graphics. Your link content could be any InDesign elements. It could even be animations, which you know are hard to know when someone's made a change. So link content, InDesign to InDesign, InDesign within the same document. It works either way. So now, speaking of that conveyor, let's bring up the original page, and let's talk about using the content collector tools. So I have a logo here, here, and here. And of course, I could copy those as a group. I can copy them independently and paste them one by one. But with the new content collector tools, I can work in ways that I never could before. So for example, I can bring up the new content collector, and I can specify that I want to bring in that content one at a time. So if I just click, I've got the A, I've got the logo, and I've got the other logo. Or I can do a drag marquee select. And this way, I will get all three of them. Now, it shows three here, letting me know that I've got three pieces. But in, in either case, I can either grab independent objects or multiple objects. Now, when I'm ready to use them, I just switch gears to the Content Placer tool, go to any place in my document that I want, on any page, any spread, and I can, again, transform this content as I place it, 
or I can just click to place it full size or click and drag to place it as I would any other content and transform it as I do so. So in this case, we've got the multiple objects being placed all at the same time in the InDesign workflow. Now, it emptied my content collector, but I could have chose to keep the content in. I could have chose how I wanted the content to stay in, what order I wanted it to go in, any way that you want to bring that content in. Think of it as the best way to reuse content, either in the same InDesign document or multiple InDesign documents, in your print workflow or even your digital workflows. Last but not least, let's take a look at Grayscale PDF. So we'll switch back to our selection tool. Let's go back to that original document we were on. And let's go up to our view menu where we have the ability to do a custom proof setup. And with our custom proof setup, we can choose for the first time that we want an S gray setup. When we click OK, it will show our entire document as a grayscale. So why is this important? Well, as we know, not every job that we create in color is going to ultimately be printed in color. So with the Grayscale Preview in InDesign, I have the ability to preview my document as it will be printed monochrome or grayscale without having to worry about the colors and how they would transform from color to black and white. And of course, it doesn't stop there. We can go up to our file menu, we can choose export, and we have the ability of course to export to PDF for print. And when we export to PDF for print, we can choose whichever PDF standard we want as well as the ability to choose our output and our color conversion, which in this case is going to be grayscale. So you can make a grayscale PDF right out of InDesign today. So as you can see, there are several great enhancements for your print workflow in InDesign CS6. My name is Terry White. Thanks again for watching.